Every year, people are moving to London, and there are 8.9 million of us so far. That's more than New York. So I've been here for almost 10 years, and I thought it'd be a great idea to make a video of my top tips for moving to London. Now, London is a sprawling city. It can be intimidating which area to pick. And quite frankly, there are so many good ones to choose from because unlike lots of other cities where you might have a poor area and a rich area and they're completely separated, the way London is kind of structured is that even more affluent areas have more working class areas mixed in amongst them. So you might be in Notting Hill, which is a bit more affluent, which is right next to and intermingled with Ladbroke Grove, which is another neighborhood which is slightly more affordable to live in. So those are kind of the cool things about London. You'll have an extremely expensive street and then at the end of the street you'll have what they call an estate. And uh, an estate is quite often council housing, but the council sold off a lot of them as well. So even in a council block, you will have some people who pay reduced rentals through the government and then their neighbor will be someone who's living and renting from a private landlord who bought that flat from the council a long time ago. So even neighbors might be paying wildly different rents, which is kind of crazy, but uh, it's important to know when, when looking for a place here. So I can't go through all of the neighborhoods because this video would be <laughs> 100 hours long, but here are some of my favorites. Now, first thing we need to know about moving to London is that it is divided into zones. And those zones kind of correspond to the underground. So when you're going on the underground, zone one is considered central London. Zone two is also central London. And then you pay per zone effectively. So if you're traveling between zones one and zone two, you pay one fare. But if you're traveling from zone three, which is a bit further out, you pay a higher fare. And uh, there are many, many zones. <laughs> it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Rents get progressively cheaper the further you are from zone one. Zone one is the most desirable real estate in London. However, there are exceptions. You may find brand new spanking high rise new builds right next to a council estate and that council estate might have cheaper housing in it. So it's worth investigating regardless. And obviously if you're in zone one, you are very centrally located. You can get to most attractions within 20 minutes, which is pretty exciting. And a lot of places are walkable. So zone one is a fantastic place to live. Then zone two, zone two is probably where you wanna be looking in terms of moving. Uh, the rents are slightly cheaper than zone one, obviously, and there's more supply. And as you get into zone three and zone fours, those are way cheaper. But there are cool things about London in that there are different hubs. So you'll have one neighborhood that is maybe in zone three, but has had a lot of urban regeneration. So for example, when we had the Olympics in London, that was in a place called Stratford. Now Stratford is in zone three and historically hasn't been the best place to live. Kind of more working class, lower income families, but because they poured so much money into Stratford, they built up a lot of high rises and they built the Olympic Stadium. They built a huge uh, mall shopping center and it's incredibly well connected with the underground now. So loads of different tube lines go and connect into Stratford. So even though it's zone three, in East London, because it's so well connected with transport routes, you can actually get to places very easily if you even need to. So I would say starting your search, looking in zone two, and there are a couple of hotspots like Stratford in zone three that might be really interesting as well. I'm lucky I live in an area called Old Street. So Old Street is on the Northern Line. It is in zone one officially. And uh, it's great because it's part of Shoreditch. So it's also home to the Silicon Roundabout. So that's the equivalent of San Francisco's Silicon Valley. So lots of tech startups in the area as well. And that's cool because you see a real big mix of people. You see the people that have been living here for decades. And you also see the new corporations and new companies, new startups coming in. And you still get all the cool street art. So it is quite a vibrant hub to live. And it's also really well located. I can get to Oxford Street on the bus in 20 minutes. I can take the tube to King's Cross. I can take it down south to Brixton. And I actually live in a council estate. So even though you might have an incredibly expensive new build right next to me, 
Yeah, I live in one of those council blocks, and my neighbor, she's like 93, she's lived there and paid council rent for, I don't know, 70 years. I live with in a private landlord's apartment, so he bought this apartment from the council 20 or 30 years ago. So I'm sure my rent is very different to what my elderly neighbor pays. But very cool area, all the cool bars and restaurants and everything are within easy walking distance. So shortage and old street really cool area to live but quite expensive in general so moving further east is the rest of hackney and uh hackney's got places like dalston and those are also great spots to live but slightly cheaper however slightly worse connected in general as well so if you're enjoying these tips so far please high five that like button that will really help by telling youtube that you're liking the video and stick around to the end because i've got a bunch more tips in the west we've got let's say let's pick notting hill now notting hill is a really cool place obviously really famous from the movie and lots of other yeah lots of other films is featured a lot and it's got cute quaint little cobbled streets as well as prettily painted buildings but it's expensive so the neighboring neighborhoods like westbourne park and ladbroke grove they would be a bit cheaper than Notting Hill and you would still benefit from the proximity of living in that general area. So very cool area to live, that general Notting Hill area. All right, let's pick a spot down south. So if you're Australian, I'm sure you've heard of Clapham. You've heard of Clapham. Clapham is very cool. It's on the Northern Line, but I'm not going to talk about Clapham. I'm going to talk about Brixton because Brixton has loads of flair, loads of character. It's on the Victoria line, which is my favorite line, and it's at the end of that Victoria line. It is really vibrant place. It's very diverse. You've got lots of different cultures there. The food and the restaurants are all amazing, and it's really close to everything as well because you can take the Victoria line to Oxford Circus in just three or four stops. So it's really quick to get around from there it's still relatively fairly priced. I mean, it, as things gentrify, it gets more and more expensive and you find that the people that have always been local to Brixton are having to move further and further out, which is, in general, quite a sad thing and they're moving to places like Streatham and further out, Streatham being in Zone 3. All right, picking a spot up north, Camden. Everybody's heard of Camden and that street, Camden High Street, is is alive right you'll be walking past punks as you go into pret a manger as you go into the cool street food markets and uh, you'll be able to buy like spray painted converse shoes yeah everything's happening there all the time all right so i took a little sit down in camden camden's definitely one of my favorite spots in london but not on the weekend so top tip don't come hang out here on the weekends is nightmare right much better to come during the week because it's the second biggest tourist destination in London. So you've got tons of people all over the show, it just becomes impossible to walk around and it's quite a mission. But during the week, amazing, especially during the week, during a work day, especially during the week, during work day, during coronavirus. <laughs> in terms of living there, you'll be surprised that there's quite a lot of diversity there as well. So you might walk down one street, it might be a very affluent street. You literally turn the corner, you get into a more working class street so that's the way london's designed in general and it's great it leads to a lot of diversity in the different areas so camden is one of my favorite areas in london for sure now renting in london london quite notorious and expensive place to rent or to buy property so property prices are very very high and that in turn leads to the rentals being very high now Post coronavirus, the rentals have come down a bit, so it's probably a good time to rent at the moment with prices in general having dropped maybe eight to 10%. So that's exciting if you were a renter or deciding to move to London, you will be getting more bang for your buck, possibly being able to live in a nicer, a nicer street, a nicer area, a nicer building than you would have had in 2019. So that's definitely something to keep in mind of if you are planning to move here, that you will get more for your money rental wise. Now that doesn't mean that the list prices are lower, right? Some of the list prices are lower, but in general landlords are keeping their listings priced as they were priced in 2019, 
but the landlords are far more willing to negotiate on rents. So last year, if you saw a place you liked and you didn't offer the same amount or slightly more and have your deposit ready, you would probably miss out on that apartment. But now, post-coronavirus 2020, you can negotiate. You can haggle with landlords a little bit more than you would have been able to previously. Now, how do you find a place to live in London? You can obviously Google <laughs> flats to rent in London and come up with a whole bunch of search results. I'll save you a little bit of time. The best spots are, in my opinion, Facebook groups. Facebook groups are really great. If you're not looking to get an entire apartment, but more looking to find a uh, room or a flat shed, there are loads of Facebook groups, for example, I'll link a couple in the description, but there might be one for e that's focused on East London, there might be one that's focused on North London, those kind of things. Spare Room is a great website as well, I'll link to it down below. You can filter for rooms, you can filter for entire properties, and what is cool is they have a buddy up feature. So if you're moving to London by yourself, sometimes finding a room in an apartment that already has other housemates or tenants isn't ideal because you might be then paying more than if you got an entire property and shared it with someone else. So you might find an entire property on spare room. It has several buddy ups. You guys decide who gels well together as housemates and then you sign the contract all together. So that's a kind of cool feature. They have another feature called speed flat mating, which is nice. So they all, well, they were organizing drinks. They organize drinks and events, like the people that are looking for housemates, they come, the people that need a place to live, they come, everyone meets each other and sees if they gel. Because living with multiple people in one property, it is quite important that you like the people you live with or at least don't hate the people you live with especially as there's not that much space oftentimes there isn't even a living room so you'll be sharing the kitchen so you you want to like the people that you're you're living with. there's also right move there's zoopla and i really like open rent open rent more focuses on private landlords so you get to meet your landlord or at least speak with your landlord Bef uh, rather than just going through a letting agent because letting agents can change and you don't then know the person that you are effectively renting from, i.e. your landlord. Another key thing to budget for is that you will have to pay council tax. So council tax doesn't apply if you're a student, but for everyone else, you will have to pay council tax. So that is charged on top of your rent. So let's say your rent is 800 a month and you're living in Islington, you will probably have to pay between 50 and 80 pounds for council tax. Now each council has a different tax that they charge. Westminster Council, which takes in a lot of zone, uh, a lot of zone one and a lot of uh, and a whole bunch of zone two, <laughs> they actually charge the lowest amount of council tax. Whereas places like Islington, it might be around 75 pounds a month so that's something to take into account also be wary of budgeting for bills like internet gas electricity water that stuff all has to be paid as well so take that into account a lot of landlords will say bills included in the advertising so keep an eye out for that bills included uh, for example on spare room it quite clearly says and you can filter for bills included but that's not always a great deal because then you are trusting that the landlord has got a good deal, has found a, a nice internet provider that's got good speeds. Perhaps you want green electricity. You know, it's if you're gonna be staying in a place for a while, you can negotiate with those different providers and get that price down. You can click the link in the description to get four free stocks from Webull. So that's basically free money, which is amazing if you're in the US. If you're not in the US, click the link for Trading212 and get a free stock over there. Now make sure you crush the like button and subscribe. I'm posting new videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now watch these videos next. I'll see you in there. Let's hustle together.